Once upon a time, I was dating a girl who wanted me to take her to the state fair. To afford this special date, I made the difficult choice to sell some of my action figures. One of those figures was Jane Foster as the Mighty Thor. It was a beautiful day at the fair, but ultimately, things just didn't work out between us. Years later, I'm embarrassed to admit that I still miss that special lady. So I got this one, and this one. Which one's better? Stick around, it's time for another Versus. Welcome to Five Points of Articulation, where I review action figures, and then articulate five points to help you decide if you want to add that figure to your collection. The five points I discuss are packaging, presentation, posability, playability, and price. I'm Jason, and if you enjoy my content, please like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube rigmarole. In this corner, the 2017 Mighty Thor from the Gladiator Hulk Build-A-Figure Wave. And in this corner, the Mighty Thor from the Love and Thunder Korg Wave. Starting with the packaging, and I did pick this one up loose, so I don't have the original box, but Google Image Search does. As we can see, it's a pretty standard Marvel Legends box for the time, but this one comes in a normal window box as well. And considering the last Mighty Thor I looked at, that is definitely appreciated. I love the new logo and the splash of color at the bottom. Nice picture of Jane on the side, and a completely different picture of her on the back. Jane Foster's life is forever changed when she mysteriously comes to possess the Hammer Mjolnir and the power of the Mighty Thor. Other figures in the wave include two different versions of Thor, King Valkyrie, Star-Lord, Groot, and Powder. Put their parts together and you can build an all new Korg. Also, for those who want it, here's the barcode. This wave is one of the last times we're going to be seeing this style of Marvel Legends window box. It's colorful, it's dynamic, it shows you everything that you're getting, more importantly that it's not defective, and for packaging, it absolutely wins this round. Moving on to presentation, and the comic book version stands at just over 6 inches, whereas the movie version is a bit shorter, standing at 6 inches on the dot. As I said in my last Jane Foster review, this is one of my favorite comic book Thor arcs. The movie's done a fantastic job of translating this to live action. In fact, one of the only real differences is the chest armor. This one seems more like the movie style armor that we've been seeing Thor wear previously, whereas this one is just a breastplate and a black shirt. That said, both of them have V-style detailing in the top, and action figure wise all the details are sculpted on this one. This one, however, is only painted on. There's also a lot of similarities in the skirts. Notice just the three discs here. As we can see, they've been replicated in the movie design. The comic style skirt's fairly simple, of course. I do like the little tee at the bottom. The movie one is cut similar, it just has a bit more line work. It also has an extra slit in the back to help with articulation. One minor difference are the bracers. Comic book Thor only has one sleeve and one bracer, whereas movie Thor is a bit more symmetrical. On that note, we can see some nice paintwork. Definitely a big difference from the 5 inch version. And even the boots aren't too dissimilar. The comic boots are wrapped up with wings around the ankles. The movie one isn't wrapped, but it's still brown and does have wings. One surprising difference are the capes. The comic version is a very muted, almost muddy red, whereas the movie one is very bright and vibrant. Usually, it's the other way around. One thing I do like better about the comic version is that this cape has a bit more texture to it, but the thing I like best about the movie version is that it's glued in place. The comic one is constantly falling off. That does, however, present a great opportunity to see her from the back. And if you're curious about the back of the movie version, well, here you go. A little bit of paintwork on the skirt, which is surprising since no one will see it. And although there's no paint on the back, we could definitely see lots more line work. Going for the head, and this is a perfect recreation of what she looked like in the comic. I love the wash to her hair, and also how her dot-like eyes peer out. This head's been cast in marbleized plastic. The movie version, of course, is her unmasked look. To my eye, this is a great likeness to Natalie Portman, even down to her mole. I like how her hair transitions from dark to light, and I really like the curls. We can see more of that on the back. For 2017, this figure was great for Marvel Legends, and honestly, I think it still holds up pretty well today. That said, with an all-new sculpt, finely painted details, and face printing technology, there really is no comparison. For a presentation, this round goes to movie. Moving on to posability, and this is going to be a surprisingly close call. From the top in the comic version's heads on a ball joint and a disc hinge, the movie version, however, is on a dumbbell joint. Neither figure can look up because of the hair, but both of them can look down just fine. They can also look side to side. Both ladies have swivel hinge shoulders that raise 90 degrees, and both of them have bicep swivel. This was virtually unheard of for a lady legend at that time. That said, as is all too common, she has single jointed swivel elbows. And 
thanks to the bicep swivel, it kind of takes the whole arm with it. The movie version, however, has pinless, double-jointed elbows, but both figures have swivel hinge wrists. Shifting to the torso, and both ladies have diaphragm joints. Thanks to the design, the comic book version is pretty much seamless. Despite the capes, they can arch back this far, and hunch over this far. They can also tilt, and twist. Speaking of twist, there's a small amount of twist in the movie version's waist. Below the waist, and both figures have ball-jointed hips. They can kick out this far, and split this far. Movie version, clearly more so. Traveling down the leg, and both of them have thigh I cut, double jointed knees. The movie version is pinless and definitely works better with the skirt and Marvel Legends ankles that hinge and pivot. Not only is the articulation on the original great, but the inclusion of bicep swivel was an unexpected bonus. That said, the new one has all of that plus double jointed elbows. For poseability, this round goes to movie. Moving on to playability, and the comic book version comes with Milner. Between the line work on the handle and also the engravings in the hammer itself, I would almost speculate that this came from a movie version of Thor. This surprised me so much that I kind of wondered if I had the wrong hammer since I did get this one loose, but no. Oh, this is the one that came with it. Tiniest bit of silver paint slop on mine. For a couple of comic versions, here she is with the 80 years Mjolnir. I always appreciated the paintwork and the engraving, but I do feel that the handle's a bit too stumpy. For my money, I'm a much bigger fan of the Marvel Select one. Of course, you could also spice things up with this one from Marvel Select. Movie version of Mighty Thor also comes with Mjolnir. This one, of course, is all cracked and reformed. Unlike the basic version, the cracks go all the way around. They've also gone in to stamp the silver in between the straps. Personally, I like this a lot, but if you prefer your Mjolnir a bit more put together, I'm sure you could swap in another version from a movie Thor. This one, for example, which, honestly, by comparison, seems a bit too small. Also, if you're curious about that Marvel Select effect, it's a bit big for her. Most importantly, she comes with her alternate helmeted head. Similar to the unmasked one, it can't look up too much because of the hair. This far down, pretty decent tilt, and all the way around. As you can see, this is very similar to the comic book version. They both have engraving in the forehead. The movie version is red. You can also see Natalie Portman's eyes, which have been very nicely stamped on. Five inch figure, I'm looking at you. Of course, you're not able to look at me. Getting back to the legend though, and the wings are nice and soft. And if you want to see a head swap, which I know you do, here you go. The skin tones don't match, but they're fairly close. Leastways, if you want to put this on your shelf, I think you can get away with it. And here we have the movie head and the comic book body. What really strikes me is how well the silvers match. Honestly, I like both of these. Getting back to the accessories, the movie version comes with one of Korg's legs. Ironically, the comic version came with one of Gladiator Hulk's legs and also his bandolier. But playability is more than just accessories, it's also about how well your figure plays with others. First things first, and we have the deluxe 5 inch version that we've looked at before. Seeing her side by side the Marvel Legend and there's absolutely no comparison. First some other Thor and Thor related characters, here we have the 80 years version. Obviously this wasn't his look at that time in the comics. Here we have the Marvel Select version. Thor wears a similar costume to this in the new trailer. Here we have Thunderstrike, which Thor also wears a very similar costume to in the new movie. Here we have Beta Ray Bill, or as I like to think of him, the Mr. Red to Thor's Wilbur. Here we have Loki. This is a 1997 Toy Biz figure, but articulation aside, I think it still holds up. Here we have the Destroyer by Marvel Select. This is one of the great prizes of my collection. For another big boy, and here they are with Surtur from Thor Ragnarok. And here we have Hela, also from Thor Ragnarok. For some other MCU figures, and here's Doctor Strange from Multiverse of Madness. Here's Spider-Man from Homecoming. Here's Iron Man Mark III. Here's Scarlet Witch from WandaVision. And here's Vision, also from, well, WandaVision. And hey, turn him up and you can pretend that he's Gore the God Butcher. For an animated MCU comparison, and here they are with Captain Carter. I'll tell you, between Captain Carter, Thor, and She-Hulk, Phase 4 definitely has a type. For some Cosmic Marvel comparisons, and here we have Cosmic Spider-Man, here we have Captain Marvel, and here we have the Silver Surfer. For a similarly powered Warrior Woman from the Distinguished Competition, here we have Wonder Woman. This one is from DC Universe Classics by Mattel. This one is from DC Icons by DC Collectibles. Here we have her Rebirth design, also by Mattel. Somehow, every time I do a Wonder Woman video, I keep forgetting that I have this. And since it is Natalie Portman, here they are with Darth Vader. You've grown too. Grown more beautiful, that is. Ugh. For a relative scale comparison, here they are with Pizza Spidey and the Spectacular Spider-Man. And as always, here they are with Stealth Iron Man. So hey, since you put Mjolnir back together, could you make me whole again too? Sorry, no. It's okay. I get it. It's because you're already whole. Just the way you are. Aww. 
Both figures come with Mjolnir in the Build-A-Figure piece. The movie version, however, comes with an alternate head and is so comics accurate that I believe she could also fit in your comic book collection. For playability, this round also goes to movie. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. I picked up the comic book version loose at a local comic book store for $40. The new one, by contrast, was $24.99, and this one didn't even come with the Build-A-Figure piece. I might not like the price hike, but in this case, the choice is clear. For price, this round goes to the movie version, who sweeps the board 5 out of 5. For a look at the 5-inch Deluxe Mighty Thor, and to hear my thoughts on the upcoming windowless boxes, click here. Or, for more Thor content, check out this review of Thunderstrike. Thank you so much for watching, I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice and have fun.